It's Saturday, October 9th, about 3.30. I worked a little bit. I typically work at least half the day on Saturday. So we worked and then we went to the apple orchard. It was really fun. And now Mosin is taking a nap. So I'm utilizing this time. It's a small window, but sometimes that helps me focus. And so I'm hoping to finish outlining this book. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the last video. I'll link it below where I started outlining the second second book in Jezebel's series, for lack of a better word. This handy dandy notebook here and where you saw me leave off is actually the last thing that I did. So it's been a crazy busy week getting ready for the book release of Secrets to Selling Books on Social Media and so I have not had a second to sit down and outline. But it's time because I told you guys that I was going to start writing this weekend and I can't really do that if I don't know the end of the story. I mean I could but I'd rather try to figure out the end. Now I say I didn't work on it but to be fair when you're in an outlining stage, you do tend to think about it randomly and ideas kind of percolate and marinate in whatever other word you want to use. So last time when I left off, I was telling you guys how I didn't know which direction the ending should go. And since then, I talked to my critique partners and I decided I'm just going to try outlining both options. And I think that will, again, just like with outlining both books, help me know which one I want to do. And so that's just a really good strategy. If you're ever like, I don't know which way the scene should go, instead of letting it get you stuck, you can instead try both and just see. And I don't mean like actually write both unless you really need to, unless you actually need to get the whole, you know, fleshed out scene. But I think if I just bullet point one direction and then bullet point the other, I will hopefully have a good idea of where to go. But before I do that, just because I don't know how long that's going to take and I don't know how much time I have, I want to have a little fun with all of my stickers. I still have these three character stickers left from the Preptober one. I think I'm gonna order the NaNoWriMo stickers from Mandy so that I have them this month instead of waiting till next month. But I did also, hold on, did also order a ton of word count stickers from Mandy. So I used these laptop ones and I just have one lonely sticker left, but don't worry, I have a whole other sheet right here. This has been my favorite one out of all of her word count stickers. I just feel inspired by the laptops. But for this season, I ordered the, the Christmas gift one because I thought these looked really cute. Let's see, there's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 25 seems like a good amount because there's at least three or four Sundays that I won't write and probably at least one other day I won't write. So this should be perfect for a month of writing. Technically, I also have these and let me show you a close up. I love these book stack ones and I've used them a lot, but I've found that my tracker needs to be a slightly different size. Otherwise, these kind of take up more than their box. So I think I'm going to go with the presents and then I also have, this is an old sticker sheet set that had a bunch of different social media like Instagram and YouTube and you know, the newsletters and Twitter. And I don't have Twitter. So when I use these, I typically just write like a letter over it. So I'm thinking I can make a cute bubble letter title for my tracker if I can think of a way to do that. So I'm gonna get creative. I'm gonna take the word count from the top of this too. And I'm gonna, yeah, get creative with this. Let's do a little bit of stickering before we get started. Someone said your name had a ton of room Suddenly you're there standing in the crowd Everything comes back in the blink of an eye It's like you're mine, you're still mine They skip the small talk Cause you know me better than I Know myself on my spit a while now Since I saw you But it feels like yesterday somehow Okay, I think I've got it. So normally I do a calendar, but because I don't know what dates I'm gonna be writing, I'm trying to keep it loose. So I just made it simple boxes. I'm thinking I'll put the date along the top or maybe the bottom, and then I'll put the word count sticker there. There's 25 stickers, but there's 30 boxes for like 30 days in theory, so that I can just X off a day out of those five days that I might not write, maybe more, <laughs> we'll see. And then on this side, I wanna do the date that I'm writing and then the number of words, and I wanna just write 
write the number per sprint and then I'll total it, I think, at the bottom, I think. I don't know, still trying to figure that out. I haven't done one like this before, so we'll kind of play with it. But then for the actual sprinting, I have the word sprint trackers in my novel planning notebook. So I'm gonna be using those. I've got tons of those. So I'll use one per day and I'll do sprints. Maybe I'll just write down, after I do all those sprints, I'll just write down the total words written. I think that'll be a little cleaner. I did give myself two columns because I was thinking that I would write, you know, this much plus this much plus this much plus this much and it might take up more space so I might need more columns but I don't know we'll see how I feel I guess keeping it very simple obviously and I've got a little pocket in the back so I'm just gonna put these stickers right back there all right and now again enough procrastinating it's time to start trying to outline so I'm gonna try to outline both and I'm gonna try to put myself on the clock because again I don't know how much time I have so I'm going to literally do five minutes might be a little crazy but it makes me go fast and if I don't finish I set it for another five so I'm gonna set it for five minutes see what happens and try to plot the act three the first option I have no idea I'll figure it out I'm just gonna run with it and just like go for it here we go mm -hmm. Four o'clock in the evening I haven't left my room But the truth is If I'm honest I feel stuck here In the middle It took me a little over 10 minutes to plot the first option and I didn't like it. <laughs> this is an unhappy ending just like I kind of thought it would be. It, it was not satisfying so that was like route A. So I was pretty sure I wanted to go route B and that kind of confirmed it but I, I still don't know what route B actually looks like. <laughs> okay I have to plot this next. Hoping change is gonna find me. You don't have to I was like scribbling furiously. Like I had a lot of moments where I was like, wait, what do I do? But every time I thought of the character, it came to me because it just felt so much more in tune with who Jezebel is. <laughs> Again, morally gray character. So for both of them, I used the um, five point finale in the Save the Cat because it turns out I actually had brainstormed the beginning of act three, the break into three as it's called in here, or the aha moment. I had I had that pretty figured out. That felt good, but it was when you got to this, um, what Save the Cat calls the five point finale that I was totally lost. That's Let's go back and see my notes. The beats are gathering the team, storming the castle, the high tower surprise, the dig down deep, and then the, the new plan or executing the new plan. And then the last beat is the final image in the story, which is like kind of a mirror image from the first the opening image, so it sort of reflects how far the character has come. And again, that first option was not satisfying and I felt like there was a tiny feel of repeating not what happened in book one, but some of the emotions in book one, as weird as that sounds. So I don't wanna repeat anything, I want it to be fresh and exciting. So then that leads to option two. And I set a timer for that as well. Instead of taking 10 minutes, that took a little over 20 minutes to plot, but that's because I have so much more, like the first beat, gathering the team, a whole page and the top of the next page. Storming the castle, this whole chunk. High tower twist goes all the way through the next page to this page. Dig down deep was pretty straightforward. And then the new plan is on two pages as well. And the final image is on these two pages. So a lot more detail. It felt more, it just felt more real. It felt more right. And again, I can't tell you what it is, but the ending is so much more satisfying and I just love it. It's just perfect. I have ink all over me. But anyway, I'm really excited about that. That means 
I officially have a rough outline. So what I think I'm gonna do is translate it into my bullet journal here into this nice pretty spread. I'm gonna make a prettier version that I can reference and I can have it in multiple places. So I'll have the messy version in here and then like a prettier one here. And then honestly, this is another tactic that I do if you wanna try it is after I've written it out really pretty, I will <laughs> go into the computer and I will actually make a Google Doc as well and put the outline into the computer so that I have it in multiple places. I can reference it no matter where I am. And then also, once I have it in the computer, I might decide to kind of flesh it out and move things around and write myself more notes with more detail, maybe start fleshing out the scenes a little bit more in detail. And then I don't like to work on Sundays usually, so I probably won't start writing tomorrow, but I think I will try to start writing on Monday. That's a crazy thought. For act three, I really, really used this book. And so if I had not talked this up enough, I definitely recommend it if you want to try outlining for Preptober. You actually only need to read this much, these first few chapters. And then at the end, after you learn how the 15 beats work, there's this checklist here um, for each of the beats, which I think I'll go over that as well, um, just to make sure. But then the rest of this, this whole other chunk here, for the most part, is breaking down 10 different um, they're called genres, but they're basically like types of stories like the why done it and rites of passage and superhero and all these different like styles of storytelling with some additional questions you can ask and examples from real books. And then at the back, there's how to write a log line and a synopsis. So you can kind of learn how to pitch your story. And then there's also um, just a little bit, where is it? This last chapter in the back is for when you run into you unique problems. Like for example, the beats are too confusing and you need to start back even further. You can just do the five foundation beats. Or if you're writing a series, there's stuff for a series in here. Or if you have more than one main character, multiple POVs, things like that. This is such a handy resource. I love this. Not sponsored, but I will put a link to it below if you want to check it out. All right. I don't know how long this video is. It might be a shorter vlog, but I think I got to call it because I think Molson is waking up. So I'm going to, I'm, well, I'm gonna see how far I can get in transferring this messy brain dump into that nice outline in here and then moving that outline onto the computer so I can really solidify it. It's really just about repeating it. And as I rewrite things, it's sort of like you're memorizing it. First of all, that's a memorizing technique and getting it really, really ingrained where you wanna go. But then also it's a really good technique for helping you come up with more ideas, especially when you do multiple formats. So so let's go ahead and do that. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat, yeah. I was ruled out with no bailout on my own, all alone, left to bleed out. But I rose up from the ground, just like I was spell bound, all the odds were against me. So I picked up the I feel really good about this. This is gonna be, ooh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Change of plans. I think I'm gonna wait to outline in the computer and put it into Google Docs or a Word doc either way until tomorrow or Monday because I think I'll want a refresher. And again, it helps you to just like rewrite it. It honestly helps. I think that's what I'll do. I can't believe I'm about to start writing this. It's still very rough. So when Monday comes, I'm probably going to have to kind of bullet point the beginning quite a bit more and flesh it out and do more outlining before I actually start writing, but we'll face that when we get there. For right now, I hope you enjoyed this random outlining vlog. It's very fun. I am very inspired right now. We'll see how I feel on Monday when we start with a blank page because I don't know how that's going to go, but I'm excited. I'm so excited. All right, that's it for now, but I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye! Started